Hi there. This is kind of an intermediate video because the thing I'm working on now is taking more time than expected. And since it features panel meters like this one, I thought I'd briefly cover these now. This is one of these ubiquitous combined voltage and current panel meters you can buy on eBay for very little money. They even provide matching cables and connectors with it. I got this one from Seller eServices 2, but I think prices have gone up since I bought it. What I was looking for is a meter that can measure voltage of at least 50 volts and current of 10 amps. This one claims 100 volts and 10 amps, so it fits the bill. These meters are in fact already installed in my project, so I have to use another type as stand-in for some parts of this video, but the principles stay the same. The key thing you have to look out for is whether the meter uses two or three wires for the voltage part. The most common three wire types use normally black for ground, red for power to the meter and yellow to, as the input for measuring volts. When using a voltage like 12 volts, a three wire type meter will spring to life when black is connected to ground and red to 12 volts, but it will show just zero. As soon as the yellow wire is connected to the red wire, it shows the voltage, which is close to 12 volts. If you wonder why it's so accurate, the reason is that these panel meters usually have a little trim pot that allows you to adjust the reading to some degree. I actually calibrated this one at 12 volts, so it's fairly accurate, at least around the calibration point. Without going into low level details, the way the voltage part of these meters work is that the red wire goes through a diode into a voltage regulator. The diode protects it from damage from reversing the supply polarity. The voltage regulator steps the voltage down to 5 volts or 3.3 volts as needed by the rest of the circuit. The yellow wire may go through an adjustment port before it goes into the microcontroller's AD input that does the actual measurement. Some folks selling two wire versions, but on those usually the yellow input is simply internally bridged to the red wire. This is all fine if you never put more than maybe 20 to 25 volts in these meters, but as soon as you approach 30 volts or even go beyond it, the red and yellow wires need to be separated. The reason is that the usual voltage regulators like the 78L05 or 5333 types cannot handle more than 30 volts input. In fact, since they have no heatsink, they already get boiling hot even with just 25 volts or so. I have seen two wire meters advertised for 50 or 100 volts that look just like the ones on the right. In these, the regulators will inevitably burn out if you exceed 30 volts. It's just not that easy to come up with a circuit that can handle 5 to 100 volts input and produce 5 volts when on a budget as the designers of these meters are, so be very wary of cheap meters that claim those specs. In this test I'm feeding the red wire of the meter from a separate power supply, which is why I can raise the voltage way beyond the 30 volt limit without any problems. Incidentally, you can see the accuracy past the calibration point isn't as good anymore. You have to expect some non-linearity in these budget meters. If I connect the yellow wire to the red one, you can see the supply voltage is still 12 volts. All the two voltages share is a common ground connected to the black wire. When buying a panel meter, I would always go for a three wire type. You can always connect the yellow wire to the red one yourself to make it a two wire if your application allows it. One advantage of using three wires is that it enables measuring the voltage right down to zero, but the accuracy isn't that great. Repeating the test in a two wire configuration and the meter cuts out when the supply voltage drops too low. The point when that happens depends of course on the voltage regulator and the type of the protection diode. The type of meter I'm currently using in my project is a three wire type as far as voltage is concerned, but it can also measure current. Here it is extracted from its mounting frame. Removing the PCB is something you may have to do anyway because the clips that hold the frame in the panel cutout can't compress at all as they are blocked by the 7 segment display. So just to get the frame into your panel, you have to remove the PCB first, 
clip the empty frame in and then reinstall the PCB from the rear. A quick look at the PCB which is of type DCN-VC288. On the lower left you can see the voltage regulator of 5333B in this case and the protection diode next to it. Above is the trim pot for the voltage, labeled V-Adjust. In the upper left is the microprocessor. On the right you see the current shunt resistor in form of a metal bar next to the current connector and in between the current and the 3 wire voltage connector is an op amp for amplifying the shunt voltage drop. Last not least there's another tiny trim pot labeled I adjust to allow calibrating the current readout. The actual schematics of the DSNVC288 have been reverse engineered and can be easily found on the internet. But in going with a simplified schematic from before, the two new things are on the left in yellow. The current shunt with its two thicker red and black wires and the amplifier. The important detail is this connection of the shunt to the common ground here. This is a bit unfortunate because it complicates things in my project considerably and it would make the meter more versatile if it wasn't there. But sadly we have to live with it. It also means that the two black wires are basically identical. However, I must give a bit of a warning here. Do not use the thin black wire on this panel meter. The instructions even say that. Despite that, I did connect both black wires together and found that the displayed current was reading too high. So much, in fact, that it could not be fully compensated by the eye adjust trim pot. But as soon as the thin black wire was left unconnected, everything was fine. I did keep track of the overall current flowing and it did not change at all, so this is really something weird happening inside the meter. I did not have the time to investigate further and so I simply snipped off the thin black wire. Because the shunt is internally connected to ground, the meter has to be measuring the current on the low side, that is the ground wire. Basically, using the thick black wire, ground is going into the module, through the shunt and back out on the thick red wire to the load. The choice of red for that wire, as provided by the manufacturer, is a bit unfortunate and possibly confusing. You end up with two red wires going to the load. I just indicated its color here and then changed it back to black, which makes more sense. It is possible to generate a meter supply voltage safely from the input voltage even for 100 volt applications using a Z-diode to limit the voltage powering the meter which draws only around 10 milliamps. With a standard 12 volt Z-diode rated for a Zener current of 5 milliamps and a max power of 0.5 watts, you can calculate the necessary RZ easily. This table shows three sets depending on what the maximum input voltage is. The lowest possible RZ, shown as RZ min, is determined by the power rating of the Z diode. If you go below that with your RZ, the diode is overloaded and will die, but even at RZ min it will get very hot, so you should stay above that. The highest possible RZ is determined by the Zener current required by the diode to do its job. If you go higher, it won't regulate anymore. The nominal RZ is the value when the correct Zener current flows through the diode and the load current through the load. But you may want to go somewhat below that value, yet staying clear of RZ min. The reason is the lower the resistor, the longer the regulation works when the input voltage drops. But the trade-off are more current wasted and a hotter resistor and Z diode. Remember, with this circuit you have essentially converted the meter to a two-wire configuration, so it will stop working if the input voltage gets too low. Because the meter changes its current consumption non-linear with changes in the supply voltage, finding the right RZ needs a bit of experimentation. It's also not a straight cut off when the voltage drops, instead the meter starts to flicker on and off. The voltage drops below the limit and the meter turns off. But without the load current of the meter, the voltage at the Z diode rises again. If that surprises you, remember such low input voltages are well outside the zone where the Z diode is expected to work. Anyway, the rising voltage causes the meter to restart, only for the increasing load to drop the voltage again below the minimum and so on. 
Adding an electrolyte capacitor of 100 microfarad or so helps a bit, but it doesn't avoid it completely. The lower are set, the later this happens, and the smaller are the voltage swings between meter working and not working. In my project, with a Vmax of 35 volts and an RZ of 2 watts 1000 ohm, the meter works fine until the input voltage tops below 8 volts. One last note, RZ has to burn away all the excess voltage, so you need to keep an eye on the power dissipation. It can get pretty hot. Can such meters be used in a split power supply, that is one that has three terminals, plus, minus and ground? The answer is yes, but there are some things to watch out for. The key constraint is that the common ground can only be created after the meters, otherwise measuring of current will not work as expected. This constraint means that you need a transformer with two independent secondary windings, not one with a center tap, and you need two rectifiers instead of just one for a center tap transformer. Given that these conditions are met, like in this schematic here, using two panel meters to measure voltage and current of the positive and negative rail works fine. Of course, on these meters voltage and current displays have no sign, so the fact that the lower meter in this case is showing negative voltage and current needs to be understood or indicated with a label next to the meter. On my panel meters I used the iAdjust trim pot to give good readings in the range I'm most interested in 1 to 5 amp max. It works reasonably well as you can see, hopefully because I did this with a PCB out of the frame and so the display is hard to read. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you not have already and maybe consider becoming a Patreon, link in the description. As Patreon you get early access to videos, a blog and other exclusive content. Thanks for watching.